Hey, what's up guys? Today I want to go over how to mix an orchestral mock-up. Um, this is just a step-by-step -step presentation, so stick around to watch the whole thing if you guys want to see it from uh, start to finish. So I just finished up a track, um, a composition I should say, and um, I'll give you kind of a little bit of how that sounds right now. Now I'll skip forward a little bit. Okay, and so on. So you guys get the idea. Um, it's a kind of a whimsical uh, fantasy adventure track. Now, um, to get started, I ended up having to print out the audio just because uh, my CPU, me CPU meter is... Uh, uh, getting higher and higher as um, you start recording and screen capturing your your track your uh, video here. So um, I have the audio actually all printed down below, uh, which is pretty easy to do. What you need to do is uh, go into your DAW export window in Cubase. Um, they call it the multiple window. Um, on the older Cubase version, it was called batch export. Now it's called multiple. And then I just exported those tracks and re-imported it back into the session. So what I'm going to do is um, I, I want to give you this visual because, um, you know, you have the full gamut of woodwinds, brass, percussion, strings, uh, choir. So um, you have that. Um, and it's not, it's not in particularly in score order. Uh, choir us is usually a little higher up in the middle somewhere but you guys get the idea uh, there's lots of tracks that we'll be working with I, I think it's about 38 tracks here uh, starting starting tips when you guys uh, are about to mix I would start to go th um, through your track set some marking points so right here you can see in the markers um, these are oops these are the different uh, sections uh, that you'll be working on. So uh, that's a good reference point. Uh, another reference actually going to uh, the reference word is the reference track and um, I'm going to play you a little bit of that. Okay, that's from Maleficent, the soundtrack of Maleficent by James Newton Howard. And so I use this track because it sounds very similar. Uh, I was actually inspired by this track uh, while I was writing this one. And um, so so it is a good reference point because the mix um, um, has to sound very similar. So I'm going to kind of A and B that as well. So if, if anything, have at least one good reference track that you guys can use. Um, uh, something that's professional sounding like a Hollywood production value. Um, that way you can really strive for your your own uh, samples to sound a certain way in the mix. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to mute this session and I'm going to save real quick. All right, so um, I have my tracks. Right now it's just a, a really uh, plain, boring looking session and it's hard to really see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to organize the track. So the first thing you want to do is organize your track. Um, let's go ahead and make some folders. So there's about five families of folders here uh, or instruments. So let's go ahead and name them. First is called W or W Woodwinds. Um, then I have Brass. And I have Perk for percussions, strings, and choir. Okay. All right. So I have that going on. Now I'm going to move my tracks accordingly. While I do this, uh, by the way, I'll plug myself. Um, in case you guys want to watch more videos like this, you can hit subscribe. And um, please like this video if you find this useful. Almost done here. 
Okay. Uh, this last track is not in score order, but um, it's actually a, a synthetic flute track from Omnisphere. Yeah. So going to uh, the organization over here, I'm going to hold control and then I'm going to use my wheel and all the colors change. I like doing green for woodwinds, uh, red for brass, purple for percussion, and for strings, I like to do oh, oops. orange. There you go. All right. And then if you have time, you can also do um, each individual track too. But, uh, you know, this is good enough for me. So next, I, I have to route my instruments and normally um, you would go here you would add a group right and then you would um, enter a name like woodwinds right or ww stem something like that i already have that actually set up though so i'm gonna go here i'm gonna hold my uh, alt and shift i'm on pc by the way so alt and shift and then i will group all those tracks into the woodwinds Bus. So, so you see how that doesn't change over there all right next I'm gonna do that for my brass okay hold shift and L and do percussion all right and my last or actually I have a few more I'll do my strings Okay, and choir I just realized is not colored, so let's go ahead and color that. Um, so I skipped one. It's uh, yellow. Usually I do choir for yellow. All right, or yellow for choir. All right, moving on. Um, now that I have something to go off of, um, we can go ahead and solo these. Right. I'm spot checking, make sure they sound okay. Uh, okay, good. All right. Now, from my understanding, um, my choir track is the only one that has some reverb on it. Okay, uh, it's not a lot, but um, it, it's more than my other track. So that's something to think about. Um, but uh, as you can hear in the woodwinds, it's pretty dry. Okay, so I'm starting to kind of get an idea of, okay, well, um, which sounds need more reverb or tail, um, things like that. Um, also think about um, the balancing. Um, I, I, I try to uh, get the balancing right when I'm doing my programming or MIDI mock-up part first. So I try to get that uh, balanced and blended as best as possible. But you know, you, then you can do that further with these tracks. So okay, now that um, we have this all organized, I'm going to talk about some other prep um, work that is pretty useful uh, so one thing that you should be doing in all your tracks is um, doing a low pass or actually a high pass filter a low cut they call it in Cubase mute this okay um, I think I've done that already uh, actually in my exporting uh, let's see here yeah okay yeah I guess um, I, I've done it already I've done some uh, high-pass filtering but that's what you would do you, you would just make sure that any high instruments like uh, you know the flutes down to uh, triangles or whatever is very high-pitched um, symbols sometimes let's see here Let's get a, let's grab that in the beginning here. Okay, you see how there's some low information. I'll try that again.
Okay. I mean, right, that that's not much, but um, sometimes it goes really high. It gets very inverted like this. It has like a diagonal. And so that's what you you would just you um, cut all that low end information. And the, that's the reason why is because um, uh, as more of that builds up, then it's fighting your actual sounds that have low frequency information in it. So um, for the most part, it's good. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I have to do any of that, but that's what you would do. Let me just double. I'm gonna spot check. Okay, so that's the idea. So low pass, or sorry, I get confused. High pass filters. Use that for your low end information and get it nice and cleaned up. Um, now the next thing is listen for any EQ um, or I mean uh, any frequencies that just um, don't sound right. Um, generally, you know your uh, things like harp might sound kind of funky. Um, sometimes the 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 woodwinds are a little too bright. Um, too squeaky, resonant sounding. Let's uh, listen to the woodwinds for uh, instance here. Okay, so you notice, you know, it's very shrill on some of these instruments. Um, what you could do, I mean, um, it's probably not a good idea to start EQing right away. Um, I would say, you know, listen to it in context. So I'll go. Okay, so you, you hear how um, that that is a little bright sounding, but um, I, I, I like how bright it is. I don't think it's that bad. You know, if anything, I might I might EQ just a little bit off of the um, um, like one to four K end area. So um, that that's something I would do maybe in each individual instrument. So uh, the fastest way to go about this is actually probably over here. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my presets. Okay, so it's here. All right, so I have my EQ. All right, so notice I'm only on one instrument, but what you can do is you can kind of, kind of copy and paste that as you go. So let's listen again. Okay. There's a lot of information kind of right there. Um, and this will help maybe just, uh, let's see here. I might, cut a little bit down there as well okay and I'm gonna just do that to all my woodwinds okay and that'll just help tame the beast a little bit okay all right so th those are little things to uh, listen for your um, res unnatural resonances um, or just very shrill resonances uh, that build up um, uh, let's see what are some other ones some very other uh, popular ones are in the strings strings tend to uh, build up in the 2k to 4k region so let's go over here all right so I have my strings I wonder if I can send them all a uh, different color yep and sometimes you just have to do it one by one cubase if there's a way to color this all at once let me know because that will save me a lot of time okay so here's here's all the strings um 
Let's hear it in context. Okay. All right. Um. So. You know. So there isn't a. a a lot of build up. I think I might have actually done some of that cutoff um, in, in the past, but like basically you go here and uh, you would sort of cut around there in this area. Okay. Um, and maybe your ears won't hear it, but it's just something that's good to do for the most part. Um, and I've actually done that already. So. So that's something that you can also look out for. Uh, percussion is another one where you might actually hear um, some weird resonances, especially like with toms. Let's hear toms here. I don't, I don't hear too much uh, resonance, uh, you know, that, that rings too much, but if you wanted, you, you could probably go something like this and uh, do a notch somewhere where it resonated a lot. Um, let's see, let's try that again. Okay, so I would uh, maybe notch it a little bit, um, and then also uh, down the road you'll probably start cutting more in each area. So we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that. All right. So um, now that you you kind of do the cleanup of uh, individual instruments, you know, you, you solo them. Try to try to listen for anything that sounds weird. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Wow, look, listen to that. Yeah, see that that doesn't sound right to me. I think there's a Let's see. I think there's a mistake here. I think what I did is I added a delay there. I'm not sure why I added I would add a delay there um, from from that but you know it might work in in context with this okay well I, yeah I might have a rhyme and reason for that but um, now if, if if I were to, to mix that I might actually not put anything there as far as um, 
uh, like a reverb. So what I would do is I, I would treat it like a separate track. Okay, so starting around where the triangle starts here. And let's see. Good, okay. So for for those notes, uh, I'm gonna duplicate the track. And I am going to sell that. Okay, so yeah, that's probably a good thing. Um, so I'm gonna uh, differentiate the uh, wind chimes here from my triangle. Okay, and so that delay acts like a reverb. Um, I, I'm actually going to start uh, looking into reverb um, down the road. I'm, I'm just looking down at my uh, checklist here. So uh, the next thing uh, b besides, you know, your EQing and stuff um, is to uh, start thinking about panning. And so I'm, I'm kind of surveying and working really fast. Um, so. Uh, what I would do is, I, you know, take your time, just go section by section, and I would just listen to things like that. Um, and it, it would probably be better, best to, um, you know, do something like this where you are uh, repeating and looping that over and over. All right, okay. So let's go ahead and start with each instrument. Okay. Use your ears here. You can hear um, my oboe is a little bit towards the right a little more. Let's hear it. Yeah, English horn is even more on the right. Okay. Let's listen to bass clarinet. Bass clarinet's on the right. Okay, that's on the right. So a lot of uh, woodwind information is on the right side, besides the really high stuff. Okay, so I might pan my flute just a little more to the left. Okay, give it a wider stereo image across the instruments here. Actually, let's use this one. Good. Okay, let's add these all together. Okay. All right. So yeah, little tweaks like that, right? So um, you do that for all these instruments. Let's listen to the each one. So I can kind of hear the horns more on the left side. Let's listen to the trumpets here. Okay. Okay, so uh, trumpets like center right and then the trombones are more on the right. Okay, that's good to know. What about low brass? Okay, so um, what I mean, th this is just like how normal or orchestral uh, setup is, but I might want to pan the, the horns just a little more left.
dessus. Alright, good. Alright, so yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get it so it's not so right heavy. I feel like there's a lot of right, um, um, a lot of instruments on towards that right hand side. Uh, of course, as we go down in strings, it might be the opposite. So let's hear um, the percussion. I'm gonna actually pick a spot that's a little bit more busy. All right, so I'm flipping uh, the symbols. I like the symbols actually on my left side. Okay, so that that's uh, how you can flip uh, the stereo field around. So you have trump uh, timpani on the right side, and I like kind of more of that um, the percussion on the left side of the stage. So that's that. Okay, moving on. Let's hear the gongs. Good. Um, gongs could probably be narrowed in the stereo image. Maybe not too bad, too much. Let's go like that. Okay. All right, snare drum. Okay, let's do this uh, flipping again, like that. Let's flip that as well. Okay, this is the bass drum. see what I'm doing there um, I'm just kind of narrowing some of the uh, the uh, low frequency instruments towards the center but it's still kind of in that space of where um, it is on stage so to speak uh, let's see let's keep going there's just a few more I have some toms right here Yeah, it's good. I mean, I probably would flip this as well, honestly. I'm just, I guess my ears are used to that. Uh, Alright, okay, so. Okay. Alright, moving to the next ones. This is my mallet stuff. Okay. I'll, I'll pan that just a little bit over. Uh, let's see. Here. Okay, good. All right, yeah, so my mallets now are on the left. Okay. Um, let's hear so far what we have. Make sure that sounds good.
All right. So, uh, so far, I feel, feel like the panning is a little bit better. And as I'm doing this, I'm, I'm getting a very good idea of where everything is, right? So uh, now that we have uh, the Woodwinds Brass Percussion roughly panned, uh, let's go down to the strings. Okay. Uh, so you can hear, um, th this is a different sample library uh, from Metropolis, and it's probably using the um, viola patch, but I could probably get away with uh, making it more like a violin, and that's what I'm doing right here. All right, so yeah, yeah. I mean, these are things that you don't realize until they're actually exported and pan um, and uh, soloed uh, with you know all your resources available. Okay, let's see here. Let's look at the high strings. For some reason, I feel like the low strings on this Metropolis is more pan on the left, or it could be the reverb or like the, the reflection of it, but I'm not sure. I'm going to play around with that. Okay, let's hear how that sounds in context with all the strings. Okay, so yeah, not bad. Um, and then putting it in context with the horns, so you can hear how things aren't always balanced uh, equally, but w I mean, within the family of instruments, but then you can hear then in context uh, with uh, how the brass might sort of help fill in the gap. Um, you also have choir, I, I didn't actually pan that, but um, they're pretty easy, I think. Uh, so you notice how the um, 
girls or the females are on the right and the males are on the left. That might work, um, you know, but it's doing this kind of weird like voice crossing across the stereo field. And um, what if I change that? What if I flip that also around like that? And add added strings. All right, um, so far so good. So panning is good uh, just to help clean things up and make it more clear in that stereo field. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a rough pass and um, uh, you know, you might hear other things down the road. You probably hear things that I don't, I'm not hearing, but you know, at least for now, um, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, yeah, let's see, let me just double check something. Okay, yeah, I think we're okay. So moving on, um, my, next on my list is uh, we're gonna talk about spacing and go over some uh, uh, other ideas here. So uh, you already heard delays. Um, you can use delays instead of reverbs. Um, you don't always have to do reverbs. So I think that's why I did that. Yeah, I think that's why I did the Delay. I mean, it's good to change things up like that. You don't always have to reverb. Um, I think putting delays on things, uh, particularly on certain like percussion tracks or um, if it's uh, something that um, can uh, really stick out. Um, you know, like maybe you can put a delay and then a reverb on to really to make it really tail um, and and stick out even more than usual. Uh, stuff like that is a cool combination. But for the the big bread and butter, it is reverb. So uh, going to reverb, um, you want to make a FX track or an aux track if it's Pro Tools uh, for each family. I let I think so. Here you go add an effects track. Um, I like using my uh, Valhalla room. And then uh, you can make a name like Woodwinds effects or verb and add a track. And then there you go and then you have that. Um, I think I have a preset one though. So let's go ahead and start going through each one again i'm going to hold my um, quick link shortcut which is alt and shift and then i'll just go to my woodwind reverb okay as opposed to the woodwind verb that i just made so this is the real one that i already have set um which one's which here pre pre fader post fader post fader okay um, let's go ahead and open that okay, so over here all right so I have it bypassed um, right now I have it set to my go-to which is a LV 426 uh, medium hall I think it's a lexicon type of um, um, simulation let's so let's go ahead and do that Okay, so I have a lot of reverb on there as you can see. So let, let's go ahead and um, make sure it's not crazy. All right, so those are my tracks from here to there. All right. Is it just, huh? How come it's not activating? Sorry, my uh, switching over from 9.5 to 10.5 is a little confusing to me. Um, for some reason, it's not turning on. Let's go ahead and try this instead. Okay, it's better. Okay. 
Oh, okay. I see what happened. I just needed to activate and then change it to the fader. Okay, so the uh, important thing here is to listen for the tail um, uh, and, and your, um, your, your decay uh, time that it, it decays, which is set to 3.69 for now. Um, it, it all is dependent on the tempo, I think. So let's try again. Okay. That sounds good. I mean, when it goes da 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 and as, as it hits that last note, it's a very short cutoff note. And so it's nice to be able to have that note carry through with the reverb. So um, in this case, I, I'll i keep the DK time just what I had it set to. Um, but yeah, you see how it's like about negative 14 on the sends. Let's look at the, um, the bassoon and bass clarinet. Oh man, that's so weird. I don't know why it's all on pre-fader and post-fader. Okay, I think we're good there. Okay, moving on. We have, I'm gonna put the volume up just a little bit. Okay, we have now our brass um i think i can get out of this now since i know how to actually um navigate here through this window okay we're gonna add new reverb on the brass yeah that's so weird how it, it changes to that okay yeah i don't know why it goes to pre-fader it shouldn't go to pre-fader all right, I'm gonna edit this track. Okay, so we have now a brass reverb track. Let's find ourselves a good spot where there's um, brass in every little spot here. Let's try this right here. Cover your ears if uh, it sounds too mushy. Okay, and uh, on lower instruments, just a tip for like you know any trombones or bass bassy instruments, you probably don't need as much um, reverb. So I'm gonna dial that back a little bit. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and put maybe the reverbs um, of the the brass and woodwinds together. Let's try a different spot. And it sounds like. Um, uh, the brass is just really loud, so it's kind of even. It's it's very hard to hear the woodwind. So, um, I don't know if I need to spring down the brass a little bit overall, but um, that that'll be uh, something to consider. Let's listen to the beginning. Okay, all right, not bad. Um, let, uh, the brass might be a little too uh, mushy still, but you know, uh, in context with everything else, it might sound okay. So now let's listen to percussion. Um, percussion. Um, uh, let's let's listen for the room. Okay, you, uh, to me. 
Uh, it sounds like the tambourine and the timpani sound like they're in two separate rooms. So what the, our job here is to get in the same spot. So timpani, let's listen. Okay, so um, we can dial that back quite a bit if we add some reverb on there. Okay, where are you? All right, now I'm going to open up that reverb track, but unbypass. All right, here we go. Okay. Sounds better now, right? It's, it's more in the background. It doesn't sound as, as front. Also, what will help with that is um, maybe some EQ um, and maybe some just uh, overall balance. I can just bring that down a tad. Okay. And maybe some EQ, as I was saying. Um, we could maybe, let's see. That was a weird crackly sound. Okay, so uh, I, I, that that sounds a little better. Let's hear in context with everything else. That's starting to blend better, right? Um, yeah, even panning helps. Uh, getting too far sound more back is uh, if you if you collapse that um, panning a little even further. So yeah, now it's starting to sound like it's in the same room. So th that that's the the main instrument that poked out at me. Okay, so now I'm hearing that the symbols are kind of, it sound like they're like uh, 20 feet in front of the stage instead of where it should be more in the back. And that's just because we didn't add any, um, any uh, reverb. So yeah, as I add more symbol reverb, then you might hear other instruments poke out. So at this point, let's just kind of add a little bit of reverb to everything from there to there. All right, and turn that on. There we go. All right, I'm gonna solo that.
Okay. All right. You see how the now it's starting to sound like it's in that same area. Uh, think about the or, the orchestra and think about that the percussion section being more like in towards the back of the stage, right? And and um, what I'm hearing is it's starting to blend more that way. That's that's the approach you want to go. So that the the combination of panning, combination of your reverb, and then just the overall balance and and having it so it doesn't sound like it's so loud and up front you're gonna have to balance that with the volume as, as well and the faders so um that's that in the percussion let's go ahead now and uh, look at the string section all right add this in here and choir yellow okay all right let's go ahead and solo that um that's a good spot let's see yeah, let's try that all right yeah i mean it sounds good the good samples um you know, so how, how do you get that to this to stick out or pop i should say how do you get that to pop and make it sound really enhanced um okay so let's add a string reverb to everything so let's do that let's open the effects channel that's on another valhalla track um you know, there's other ones out there for sure that are probably better but valhalla does the trick for me let's try it now Okay, cool. Um, let's listen to uh, uh, that in the beginning now with that string run. All right, so um, I got I got the spacing. I feel like I have all of that um, better in the in the spots. Uh, so what you'll hear is the strings sound more you know, front. Oops, let's see. Yeah, it kind of sounds more up front. And then um, if you go to percussion. Um, Sounds kind of more in the background. What about brass? Okay, so brass is really uh, uh, re reverberating. So we're probably not in the same space yet uh, with everything. Let's listen to the woodwinds.
Okay, so um, let me just hide these other tracks here. We probably don't need that. Okay. All right. All right. Now this is a good point to um, you know, kind of like re reset your ears, so to speak. And let's go ahead and uh, listen to a little bit of this track. You'll notice it sounds very similar. <laughs> Okay. All right. So after hearing that, I do hear um, quite a bit of tail on everything. Um, also, the the choir sounds like it's uh, reverberating quite a bit, like it's in a cathedral. So let's see if we can make it sound like that. All right. Okay. Let's see. All right, I'm going to add brass on there. Okay. All right. Let me say that again. So sorry, I was muted. Um, what I was saying is you want to start to give everything dimension. I purposely got the strings to sound more in front, whereas uh, the brass and the choir are really behind. And percussion is kind of in the back too, but it's actually a little bit in front of that. Um, if you look at the choir, uh, in an orchestra setting at, at a live concert, um, you'll see the choir usually is in the back. It's behind uh, the stage and it's uh, they're kind of above. So that's what I'm trying to do here. That I'm trying to get the choir to sound like that, where it's very back behind, but it also is reverberating so much that it, it sounds like it's just folding around everything. Um, it's, it's a cool effect and is, um, I think that's kind of what we want to go for in a track like this. Um, so this is an overall um, uh, rough draft, you would say, of a mix. Uh, now, um, if you want to just do other things to, to enhance this even more so, there's uh, spatial uh, uh, panners that, that uh, can expand the image. And so let me just show you a quick one that you can do. Um, let's go to our our main stems. All right, here we go. I'm going to um, change one thing here. There we go. Channel visibility shows only selected tracks. Okay. Okay. So, um, what you could do now is um, you could you could use things like uh, the the Cubase one. That's uh, stock is called a stereo enhancer, right? You can um, narrow the width. You can make the width bigger. Um, sometimes it's you don't have to make it bigger you can narrow it to make it sound better um, but you know that teach their own so let's see
let's try that again. Okay, so that's one way to do that. Um, you know, there's a, a bunch of other plugins as well. Um, for instance, I, I have, let's see, let's go back to that. Whew, there's so many plugin um, categories now. So then you go to like something like uh, Ozone uh, by Isotope, uh, Imager. It's, that does the same thing, but it's, um, it's like a multi-band. Um, so, um, that's really cool. I, I, I would probably use that instead, but just for the sake of uh, time and show you how that how that you would uh, be able to uh, make that sound better uh, quickly, that's how you would do that. Um, there's also saturation plugins, saturation tools uh, such as uh, Virtual Tape Machine by Slate um, make the track sound even that much better. Um, I don't know what it is. There's something about that saturation. Um, like the good old analog uh, machines and how they enhance the harmonics, um, you can you can hear a difference. So um, uh, hopefully with YouTube and the, the encoding that it does with the audio, hopefully you can hear it too on your end. But let's try. It. Okay, so I just want to make sure I am grouped together. So I'm gonna have two of these opened up. I believe they are. On the same one should be hmm so if I move this is that moving yeah okay so they are grouped together It's really subtle, but um, you, you can definitely hear the difference uh, on on these speakers. And um, it, I don't know, it just makes it sound warmer, I guess. Uh, it's warmer, and, and and it just it doesn't sound as uh, you know as like sterile and cold. Uh, other tricks that you guys can use. Uh, well, automation. Has, I mean, I don't know if it's you can call it a trick, but um, automation and is, is is very important. And you can ride the faders, especially towards like the very clim climactic moments. Um, let's hear this. Whoa, that was loud. So, so for instance, you know, like at, at that point, um, I can go ahead and um, dun 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 dun. I can automate that to to even pop out that much more and get, uh, add like one to two decibels and ride the fader that way. Um, but you know, that that's just one idea. Um, uh, you will have to automate 
uh, for balancing purposes as well, sometimes um, uh, the brass track is not going to be all the same um, f um, volume, and, and you might have to uh, balance that and, and do a cut at a certain section. So, yeah, um, that's all important when you mix. Um, I probably um, am too slow to show you, and I think you guys know what I mean by that with the automation. Um, you know, go here, red the faders, etc. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, and then uh, one other thing that I'll say uh, before we go today is um, uh, mastering purposes or mastering considerations. When you are mastering, you can use a uh, in-house plugin or a third-party plugin that actually uh, monitors the loudness so when you're uh, doing a, a pass and you just play the whole thing I'm actually going to um, uh, put the volume down very low okay and I, so you can hear me talking still okay you can see here that um, it, it's starting to calculate the integrated LUFS and LUFS is um, the standard that a lot of these streaming channels are doing like Spotify they're they're using that as a, as a guideline for loudness um, you want to target around negative 16 I believe um, I think they're all different but I think negative 16 would be a safe bet you don't want to go um, more than that like 15 maybe but at, at once you go 14 it's just it's uh you get to that point where you can get penalized i hear so try to stick around there um right now i'm at a good target point to stay above the 16 but um it's gonna get louder here so let's just see how it goes okay now you see how as the volume increases my LUFS meter is now starting to go to the negative 19 range. Okay, now it's uh, hovering around negative 18. That's good. Um, so I don't really need to do too much in the in the limiter plugin. Um, oh, it's yep. I was looking at the short term. Okay, so negative 18 is the integrated. It might go down to negative 17 here. We'll see. Yep, now it's going to negative 17 on the peak climactic moment. Oh, now it's going to negative 16. All right, perfect. So, I mean, yeah, as you can see, I, I probably calculate this ahead of time. That's why it's like right at the negative 16 mark. So I don't really need to do anything in terms of uh, mastering too much. If you can just get your sound there, then the next part in the mastering is um, uh, just to do some uh, overall shaping. Uh, so you can go to the 
let's see go to the stereo track or the two two mix track and then um, add a um, EQ something like this and start to shape certain aspects of the track the overall mix and that that's that's tough uh, I'm, I mean mastering is um, even a much more subtle art form um, you want to make sure that the overall uh, frequencies from the uh, negative uh, sorry not, not the negative but the uh, 40 Hertz range uh, and uh, going up until where the 20k is everything that there's there's a nice uh, curve that that happens you know it, there's a bump in uh, above where the uh, 60 Hertz into the 120 Hertz or the low uh, range low uh, frequencies are that that should be pretty high and it should kind of slope down right and so that's the idea with uh, that let's let's just double check the shape on mine Another consideration is uh, A, B your track. So just make sure as you're doing all of this, you can um, be reminded of yourself why you're, you're going about this direction or that direction. Um, you know, for instance. I just love that overall ambience in that room um, and trying to emulate that right as much as I can down here. It's close. I mean, uh, you can tell the the instruments sound a lo little bit more present and up close, and that can be fixed maybe with some uh, mastering, um, with some EQing uh, on each instrument. Uh, but you know, overall, it's not going to sound uh, exactly like your reference track, of course. But try to get that vibe at least. Uh, wh whatever the the vibe you're going for in that reference, uh, try to emulate that using all the little tricks that we've just showed you with the EQ, panning, uh, spatial um, reverbs, things like that. That's pretty much it when it comes t uh, to the mixing part. Now, it doesn't hurt to, um, you know, fork out two to $500 for a uh, mixing engineer uh, if you have the budget for it because uh, you, you will get what you pay for um, but you know, if you're on a tight budget, this is the way to go. You can um, you can do this kind of stuff step by step yourself. So I think that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I know it's a long video. I hope uh, you guys enjoyed the journey with me. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I think I may have uh, made some mistakes along the way just because uh, I'm not used to. Cubase 10.5. So, um, if uh, if you watch me and, and you realize maybe what I did was the opposite of what I wanted, such as the orange, um, I think the orange is probably a post fader. Um, now that I think about it, but uh, I don't know. Anyways, it, it works because I didn't change anything with the faders yet. <laughs> uh, so. Um, yeah, I realized I probably did the opposite of what I wanted, which is orange po uh, post fader and the blue, I guess, is the pre fader. I, I thought it was the, the opposite. So, um, yeah, if, you, if I get any comments on that, um, you know, I, I kind of corrected myself now. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Smash that like button, and I will talk to you later.